Characterization of life without Christ. Characterization of life without Christ. In other words, we are going to paint a picture. We are going to describe life without Christ as God speaks through his word to us from Ephesians chapter 2, the first three verses. And I read, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we are by nature children of wrath, just as the others. May God bless his word in Jesus' name. I must confess to you that I have a past. A portion of this past, I, I wish it were not there. But the reality is that the past existed. But also I have a past, a very good past, that I always cherish. I long to remember it. And I know that what is happening with me or has happened with me has also happened to you. You each has a past. Portions of the past you don't want anybody to know. You wish it never happened. You wish it should not be recalled. But then alongside comes Jesus and he turns around the table and from that past he gives you a present that leads into the future. We find Paul talking with the Ephesians, making them to remember their past, who they were before they met Jesus. So it is good sometimes we consider the past, at least it helps us to embrace and appreciate the reality of where we were coming from and how salvation is so real, so magnificent and God to be adored above all. It also makes us to remain humble. How that God in his graciousness and mercy can pick up out of wherever he found us and then set us up on high and keep leading and as he keeps leading. Thirdly, it helps us to testify and help those who have not yet come in contact with, contact with Jesus. That look, no matter how messy their past was, there can still be redemption. And no matter how good it was, they can still become better. Because no matter the situation, things improve when Jesus takes the center stage. Is that true? And may his name be glorified in Jesus' name. As we talk about characterizing the life without Christ... Understand this very truth that will be very clear in this message from God. It is that the life without Christ is lived under a system that is supervised by Satan and results in death. Outside Christ, you find yourself living within a system that is under the supervision of the devil, the chief architect of that system, and the result is nothing but death. We'll see it in three ways, in three distinct ways from this passage. Number one, we shall discuss the condition of living without Christ. Number two, the conditioner of the world without Christ. And number three, the conclusion to living without Christ. The condition of living without Christ, the conditioner of the world that is without Christ, and the conclusion to living without Christ. Let us look at the first, the condition of living without Christ. Verse 1 of chapter 2 of Ephesians reads, And you he made alive, who we are dead in trespasses and sins. You may choose to make this personal so that you feel the force of this verse. Read it something like this. And I, Gideon, 
he made alive who was dead in trespasses and sins. He made me alive when I was dead in my trespasses and my sins. He made you alive when you were dead in your trespasses and your sins. The word condition simply means to put someone or something into a particular mode or state of being or performance or operation. And anyone who likes sports and watches sports people or participate in, in it actively knows that we like putting the opposing you know, partners always under a condition where they should not function as they desire to function. Because should they function, possibly you may not win the game. So you do things that will make their performance to be based on what you have conditioned them to perform. So sometimes people may, may, may lose a game, not because they are not good, but because they couldn't rise above the conditioning effect of the conditioner. Praise God. I remember at one time, you know, just right there, you know, I, I like to have tennis these days. Because I feel I cannot afford going to fall in the football pitch. So I, I, have, I have reduced my footballing to watching uh, English Premiership. And uh, when Arsenal is playing, you know that I like to watch it. Unless something godly takes me over. And there was this guy that used to beat me. And then he came after several months. And he thinks he can do the same. And boy, oh boy. I watched him and I look at him. He has lost even the, being aware of the table. And he thinks he can rise up and do like before. And all I did was to condition him based on the weaknesses that were apparent to me. And you know what? He destroyed himself by his own skills. That means he was under a condition. It goes beyond playing a game. But it has to apply to the mind and to all the set skills for that game. But somebody puts him there. And he found himself in that state that he could not but be defeated. Now, without Christ, people are under a condition. And that condition, the Bible tells us, is nothing but what? Dead. Praise God. They may be physically, biologically alive, but to God, they are dead. Dead from his presence. Dead from his covenant. Dead from his promises. Dead as dead spiritually lack of the life force of God in their own lives. And the Bible says to us in Isaiah 53 verse 6, Isaiah 53 verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray and have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord laid on him, that is Christ, the iniquity of us all. See, the problem here is this. When man fell in the garden, from what we read from Genesis chapter 3, everything fell alongside with man. The creation that we see in chapters 1 and 2, that God will say everything is perfect, all of a sudden begins to produce another thing that is not perfect as a result of the fall. So no one deliberately seeks after God. People begin to do their own thing and thinking that what they are doing really is a service to God. But God's word says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have lost the way back home. Where is home? The presence of God is home. Are we together? We are created to live daily in his presence. And when we lost our way, each one was going his own way. But then God looks at it. What is happening? I made these people for myself. I must rescue them. He looks at the moral bankruptcy, the ineptitude of all our ethics and ethics is put together. And he says, no, my son, you have to go to earth. You have to rescue people for me. So this verse uh, no, tells us straight. And the Lord lays upon him the iniquity of us all. Iniquity means moral ineptitude. In the highest of all, thinking whether I call it Sonum bonum, the highest good that the human mind can ever produce. We see its zenith in the production of Hitler, 
the first world wars will come, the second world war will come, and all the things that are happening, and man is still craving for the good. But the truth is, man can never produce any good. Are we together? The best that he can produce is that which sabotages him at the end of the day. Because sin is a principle that is at work in man. So Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says this to us. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And since that happened, Romans 6, 23 pronounces the verdict. For the wages, the penalty of sin is death. But then, if we are going to run away from sin and embrace eternal life, then we have to receive the gift of this life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise the Lord. What are we saying? The fall is not just a fall for man, but the whole creation has been subjected to vanity. The whole effort of humans also have been subjected to vanity until we all find our ways back to Jesus, until we all find our hearts anchored again in Jesus, until we surrender completely to him as a Lord, help. If he doesn't help, we really cannot help ourselves because we are under a condition. This condition is terrifying as it is also devastating. The consequences of living without Christ is beyond what any human mind can describe because death is the result. Somebody kills and he kills in the name of God. Whether he be a Protestant Christian that is a fundamentalist or whether it's a, he's a fundamentalist Islamist, whether you call him a Shiite or a Boko Haramist, whatsoever, the person does that all in the name of God. And you wonder, God that made all things beautiful? What is happening? It is because people have been under a condition, a condition of life without Christ. And when Christ is not there, the thinking, the behavior that brings about the actions will all be bankrupt. Pastor Gideon Bagudu will be right back. This program was sponsored by friends and partners of Club 300. Join us today to extend the victory of Christ to the world. You can contact us through any of these channels. God bless you. Welcome back. Some time ago I read about this professor of preaching, Dr. Erwin Luzer. He was teaching homiletics, or called preaching in Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. And he had this habit. Every year he takes his preaching class on tour. And one of the places they have to visit, first of all, is to go to the cemetery. He takes them to the local graveyard and he selects a grave and reads the name on the tombstone and tells his students, I want you to preach to that man lying in there. You can imagine what will happen. Everyone in the class will be chill, quiet, like the graveyard itself. See, no matter how you think, you are not afraid. If you happen to find yourself in a graveyard, you begin to see other dimensions of life. No matter how you think that you are not poetic or not given to arts, you begin to imagine things. So these students will see, uh, has our professor gone not? I mean, you can all remember that film, Naughty Professor. Yeah, the Murphy. But then, no student would dare to preach to the dead. He has to volunteer to teach. And let us fictitiously take a river's name. In the first service, I used the name Dokubo, I think so. So imagine that it was Dokubo. I'm not referring to the one we know or anyone fictitious. Are we together? So now imagine it is a Mr. Dokubo that is there in that grave, and this preacher has to preach the gospel to him. And he has to, I mean, with the students now, he has to demonstrate to them. Say, you, Mr. Dokubo, unless you give your life to Jesus Christ and be saved, you will go to hell. 
I mean, he has to preach. And the whole class listening to him. But then, afterwards, they will ask him, you know, the way Jesus and his disciples will do. What's the essence of this? Can't you do this thing in the class? We left the classroom with his beauty and everything that the lecture hall should provide. And he took us to the cemetery only to do this that you could have done in the classroom. But this is the moral of it. There is no difference in preaching to the gospel. When we are preaching to people, we are preaching to those who are dead and they really don't listen until God helps from heaven. Are you getting that? Those under the condition of life without Christ are characterized by one simple word spelled D-E-A-D. Let's say it together. Dead. Without Christ, people are dead. A lot of living corpses are riding along. Biologically, yes, bios is operating inside them, but they lack zoe. They are separated from God, and unless God thunders from heaven and helps them, they will end up in the complete dead of the soul in hellfire. And we need to be aware of that. You need to be conscious of it. The question now is, are you alive or are you dead? But God wants you alive. Amen. Amen. Number two this morning, the conditioner of the world without Christ. The first verse tells us about the condition of life without Christ. But then verse two reads, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience or in the sons of unbelief. If there is the condition, then there must be the conditioner. The fall did not happen because those people chose to fall. There was someone that served them what made them to fall. Like I described, it's like a game. Are we together? But it's warfare spiritually. And please, even on the physical, understand this. Every warfare is formed on the level of deceit. If you are able to deceive your opponent, you serve the person, that chip that makes the person to be conditioned to what you want and you defeat the opponent. Eve, Adam, and Mr. Adam, God, we are conditioned by a conditioner. Who is the conditioner? He is the person that subjects people and the world or systems into a certain mode of behavior, operation, or performance. That is the conditioner. The conditioner is an architect. He's a builder of a system. He's a supervisor of the works that makes that system to deliver his heart's desire. And the Bible reveals unto us that everyone that is already being conditioned can never live to please God. But the person lives a different life that is really in opposition to God. The person thinks, I am enjoying life. But then God looks at the person and says, no, that is death manifesting. That is not life. In a physical life, we can describe it as saying, it is an accident waiting to happen. Because eventually, the collapse will come. But God wants us to see these two things. That under the conditioner, people live by two ways. Number one, they live according to the current pattern or arrangement of this world's system. Under the conditioner, the one who conditions people, they live according to the current pattern or arrangement of this world's system. The world system is a strong and enslaving system. It keeps a person bound. It keeps a person also blind. It keeps a person in servitude. And a person is doing the wrong thing altogether. And the person is still deriving pleasure from doing the wrong thing. Such a person is being supervised by the conditioner. 
And God gives two commands concerning our lives here on earth. Two commands, and I want us to listen very carefully. These two commands are put in two Greek words, very strong words that the Greek Bible in the New Testament describes the world. The first is the word aeon, aeon, A-E-O-N. This is the word, the word we describe as age, generation, or dispensation. Age, generation, or dispensation. The second Greek word is the simple word, cosmos, which you all know. Whether you spell it as a, with a K or a, 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 an a or a C, just osmos it. You have cosmos. Praise the Lord. Cosmos has to do with the world system. It doesn't have to do with the earth. The earth is different. The earth is the physical habitation of, of, of all earthlings. Uh, is that true? All of us are earthlings. We belong here. We have our, our, our dwelling here. But then there is a system that runs this earth that is different from what God desires. It is called the cosmos. The world system that makes people on earth to behave the way they do. And these are the two commands that God gave. The first is in Romans 12, verse 2. In Romans 12, verse 2, God's word says this. Be not conformed to this world, O age. And aeon there is meant. Don't be conformed to this generation. Don't be conformed to this dispensation. Instead, be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Why? So that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? What is God saying by this command concerning living according to the current pattern or arrangement of this world system? God is saying, how the conditioner operates is this. He engages your mind. And if he succeeds with the mind of a generation, that generation goes bankrupt in their thinking. Are we together? If he succeeds in your potential of thought, because your mind is the seat of your reasoning, your mind is the seat of your intelligence in life, and should the conditioner capture it, you begin to think what he desires, and as a result, you begin to achieve what he wants you to achieve for him, not for you. Because he has an aim, and what is his aim? He goes against anything godly. He goes against anything that adds value the way God wants. His aim is to be the winner. But I do know one thing at the end of the day. My Jesus will win. Amen. Amen. If it is by democratic vote, I believe it, Jesus will not die in vain. There shall be more people in heaven than Satan shall ever have in hell. No matter the narrow way, he died. And by the narrow way, one sinner on the cross slipped in. Do you understand that? So even if God will choose to be a Democrat, Jesus will have the numbers. He can't die for nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a winner. He's never lost and he'll never lose. Are we together? I take him that seriously. Because it takes simply a belief in Jesus to enter into eternity. Hallelujah. So God is saying, watch your mind. The conditioner contends for your mind. He contends for your reasoning ability. He contends for your faculty to be able to think thoughts that are abased. So this word says to us, don't be conformed. In other words, be a non-conformist. There's a way this world thinks. And what is the pattern of this world? They brag about sinfulness. They're arrogant about sin. They take pride in the things that are in the world. And God is saying, don't be conformed. Rather be what? Transformed. Because that is the only antithesis to being conformed. Be what? Transformed. Move from this lower state to a higher state. And that higher state can only be found in Christ Jesus. I hope somebody is with me. God says, watch it. How can somebody be doing evil and yet brag about it? Do you think it is normal? It can't be normal. How can somebody be doing what is 
so much abhorrent. You know that this is despicable, but the person is bragging. And even taking people to ransom. If you don't do this, I'll continue to do this. Come on. There is a conditioner. And the person is only serving the will of someone higher. May you never come under such conditioning effect in Jesus' name. Amen. It is more than Pavlov's way of psychiatric conditioning. Are we together? It is not what our, our psychology or social psychology may tell us. It is worse than that. God wants us to think in pattern with his word. To rather conform to his word instead of conforming to the system of the age, the vogue of the generation or of the dispensation. God says, think otherwise. The second command concerning this world system is found in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. 1 John 2, 15 to 17. And God's word says this. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, and this is a summary, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world is passing away, and the loss of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. Amen. What is God addressing here? Your heart, your passions. God is saying, love is of the heart. Your heart is the seat of your passions in life. It is your heart that makes you to continue to do one thing and continue to do it and continue to do it and you enjoy what you are doing. And the Bible says this, the heart of man is extremely deceitful. No one can understand it. Thank you for listening to today's message. Believe you are blessed. If you are not born again, I would like you to pray this prayer of salvation. Lord Jesus, today I surrender my life to you. I receive you to be my personal Savior and my Lord. I confess that you died for me. I confess that I cannot save myself. receive you. I acknowledge you and I thank you for saving me. Amen. If you have just said that prayer, congratulations, you are born again. For prayer or counseling, call or write number 36 Fleming Avenue, Rural Massey, PO Box 5570, Transamadi 500003, Port Harcourt, River State, Nigeria. Or telephone plus two three four eight four four eight three three nine seven or plus two three four seven zero seven one one nine eight zero nine three or email info at mybeachytoday.org. For more information on TBCBC, visit www.mybeachytoday.org.